How do you go from this to this? I'm going to take you through it step by step. The first trick is to get good audio. The secret to good video is good audio. Ask any filmmaker. That's why I'm keeping myself purposely dark here, so you can focus on what you're listening to. Right now, you're hearing me through the webcam's microphone, but it has to go with the microphone, which means it's always going to be a few feet away. So we want to bring our microphone close to our voice, so we isolate our voice and we don't pick up all the room noise. So now we're going to change to an external microphone here, which I can bring closer to my mouth. Now, we're speaking through the external microphone. So that's the first trick you want to do. You want to have an external microphone that you can bring close to your voice and isolate your voice and get a nice, rich sound. The other thing is that this microphone has a larger diaphragm. It can just pick up more nuances in your voice. The webcam has a little teeny little microphone in there. It's not as good. So that's the first tip. Secret to good video is good audio. The secret to good audio is getting the microphone as close to your voice as possible. Next, we want to make sure visually that the person looking at us is focusing on us, not something else. And when you're looking at this, you're probably look, noticing that lamp or the windows because they are brighter. We are naturally attracted to the thing that is brighter in anything we're looking at. So you want to be brighter than everything else. Well, first thing we're going to do is I'm going to turn up the brightness on this webcam. And uh, you know, if it's too bright, it gets washed out. But let's just say that it's about right here. So I have the brightness on my webcam set as good as I can make it. However, it's still not bright enough. You need to get external lighting, just like the microphone, to put on your desk to make sure you're illuminated. So I have a couple of $30 lamps I bought on Amazon. So I'm going to turn those on. And you see that there's more light in my face. But of course, since they're a little bit under my chin, I'm getting a little bit of the Frankenstein look. So I have to have a light that's above me right here. So I have this light, has low remote control. I'm going to turn it on. And I have a little dial. I can actually turn up the brightness. And now as I turn up the brightness, you'll notice the webcam is actually reducing the brightness of everything. I'm staying bright, but the the background is uh, getting darker and I can go back into the webcam control and I can even pull up the brightness a little bit. And now <clears throat> you can focus completely on me because I have lighting that's making me the focus of attention. So that's the next thing you want to do. You want to make sure you're surrounded by some soft lights, especially above you right here. We're now going to return to audio. If you're talking to somebody on Skype, Zoom, Teams, whatever, and you have them coming through the speaker, that's their voices, their voices can go into your microphone. And then you don't want that, right? You don't want to hear you and then them twice. So your computer will try and isolate the, the sounds and it does a great job, <laughs> all things considered, but it's you can still hear the distortions. So it's not really good. Everybody wants to isolate their microphone from the speaker. You want the microphone to only pick up you and nothing else, but it picks up other things like their voice. It's going to confuse the computer. It's going to lead to bad audio. So what are the solutions? Well, naturally, the first solution is just to use a headset. And you can do that, but to me, that looks slightly unprofessional. The second solution is to use a, um, a wired, uh, well, sorry, it should be a wired headset like this and just put these in, put in some earbuds and just listen like that. But still people can see you with the earbuds and I think it's a little bit better than the headset, but not by much. The next solution is to use a um, something that's sort of made to, to hide in your ear. So this is a inexpensive sports earbud. And let me see, this is left. And so I can put this, it'll stay securely in my ear. And then I take the cable and I put it behind me. This, this actually comes with a clip. And now I can hear the other person and their voice isn't getting into my microphone and you can barely tell that I'm wearing this. So that's another solution is just to find a wired mic that is uh, clear or flesh colored or, or whatever. And then another option is to use a Bluetooth microphone. So I bought this for $30 on Amazon and it's a single ear Bluetooth uh, earbud 
and I hold this button down for five seconds, it goes Bluetooth connected into my computer, and I just put it in my ear, really nobody can tell that I'm wearing it, now I can hear the other person and um, it, they don't come through my mic. Uh, the drawback of Bluetooth microphones or Bluetooth technology obviously is sometimes the static or they don't work, so you always want to have a wired option at hand, you know, it, headset at worst. Um, the other issue is it, they're okay for using as headsets because sometimes they have some latency. In other words, it doesn't the sound doesn't reach you immediately, and that's okay if you're listening to somebody. But it's a big problem with microphones if they have latency, and when you speak, your voice is traveling after your lips are moving. So uh, that's just something to watch out for with Bluetooth equipment. But the main point is to have something to put in your ears that, that people don't see that separates their audio from what's going into your microphone that will give a better experience for everyone. Let's quickly recap. You need good audio, which means getting an external microphone that you can bring close to your voice. The second thing you need is good lighting that makes you the subject of the video, not your background or anything else that makes you properly lit. And the third item you'll need is some sort of headset that you can put in your ears and you can isolate your voice with their voice to your computer. If you want to take it to the max, <laughs> you can't do it on a webcam, I'm sorry to say. Uh, the nature of USB cables and computers, whatever, is they can't give enough energy to the webcam to use a large sensor. And you need a large sensor and larger optics to blur out your background. Yes, software can do it, but it's janky. We all know that. If you really want to get a good image, you have to use a real camera through a special HDMI USB capture device into your computer. So if you, this is the latest Logitech Stream Cam. This is as good a uh, webcam as you can buy. But now we're gonna switch to a Sony mirrorless camera running into an HDMI USB capture device. To the computer, this camera is a webcam. The computer doesn't know the difference between the other one and this one. It's the same stream. The only difference is this camera draws its own power. It draws more power than can be it can get from the USB cable. Therefore, it has a larger sensor. The larger sensor is more sensitive to light. It doesn't guess. You don't get sort of the color weirdnesses you get with a webcam. And that's why this is what you want if you really want to go all the way. Now, it has many drawbacks. But I'm going to save all the technical stuff for the second end. So if you get anything out of this video, again, I, I want to stress, it's not about making you look good. It's about removing distractions. It's a subtractive process. Don't look, think of it as an additive process, like I'm going to make my, my voice sound good or I'm going to make me look good. That's the wrong approach. The right approach is how am I going to get rid of the things that make me look and sound poorly. That's the approach you want to take. That's the approach that would deliver professional results. Later, if you want to get into tweaking things and making yourself look great, fine. But the purpose of this video is to help you improve your video by subtracting things that distract your viewer, which bring forth what you want to communicate. Okay, let's give you some more knowledge to make more informed decisions. Microphones essentially come into two types. I mean, there are more, but anything you're dealing with will be of these two types. The first type of microphone and the oldest type of microphone is what's called a dynamic microphone. This is a dynamic microphone. Probably 98% of all the music you listen to uh, was used in one of these types of microphones or anything there's so much when you see a podcast with an SMB 57B or whatever, that microphone's big, like sort of boxy. That's a dynamic. Now, the way a dynamic microphone works is it takes the sound of your voice, the physical puffing of air, essentially, <laughs> the air vibrations, 
into a diaphragm. The diaphragm vibrates and it sends a little electronic signal into your into your computer or, or recording device or speakers or whatever. And uh, the benefit is that these are dead simple um, and almost indestructible. So if you're in your uncle's attic and you see a few of these, grab them. <laughs> All right, so again, the great thing is if you're within three inches, if you stay consistently within three inches of a dynamic microphone, you're going to get unbelievable results. And that's all you need. So if you have the discipline to always stay close to a microphone, get a dynamic microphone and you're done. <laughs> um, but they're a little bit harder to keep out of frame, right? So if I'm like this, uh, so now I really have to, now I'm like five inches. It's still doable, still, still usable. So, you know, this would be great. So get a dynamic microphone. But again, if you go like this, go like this, you can go out. Dynamic microphone, okay? It looks like this, it's a dynamic microphone. But the problem is obviously is that most people don't want to stay within three inches of the microphone. Um, so they want something that's more sensitive. And for instance, like this Elgato condenser microphone. And the way a condenser microphone works, it, it sends an ele uh, electronic signal through the microphone to sort of like pre-sensitize it. And then it picks up audio and then sends it back to your device. So you don't need it to be uh, really close to you. As you can see, I'm like a few inches away. And if I go like this and I go like that, it's not that much different. So it's very forgiving in that way. So a condenser microphone is good. But again, because it's so sensitive, it will pick up more room noise. Uh, but the better thing about it compared to, let's say, a webcam microphone is that because it has like a large diaphragm in it, um, it just, you're, even though it's picking up the room, it's picking up a more fuller voice. You know, it's tinny. And uh, that's the benefit. So again, if I'm going to part anything to you, recognize the difference. Dynamic microphone, fantastic if you're going to keep it within a few inches away from your face. Condenser microphone, really forgiving and great. You don't have to be super close to it. But you do have to watch that it might be picking up too much room noise or the hum of the computer or whatever. Of course, if there's only two choices, <laughs> make life easier. And let me just say, by the way, in B&H, there's a thousand microphones and probably like 450 or 425 are condensers and 425 are dynamics or whatever. And for the purposes of internet video, I don't think you or I could tell the difference. So don't go out and spend a ton of money. I mean, any condenser microphone, I feel, uh, you know, it's going to be fine. The, the $30 one is not going to be that much different than the $500 one. Same thing with the dynamic microphones. Many people see all these podcasters using these Shure uh, SM57Bs, and they go out and they spend $400. I've tested them out. I cannot tell the difference between them and this $20 mic. Maybe, you know, again, in a music studio, this or that, but on the Internet stuff, no. Okay. The third type of mic that sometimes can be condenser and sometimes can be dynamic is a lavalier mic. Now the benefit of the lavalier mic is that it can get very close to your to your mouth, and that's really the most important thing. No matter what type of microphone you have, you always want to get it close to the source. So um, with a lav mic, it's always attached to you. Uh, the drawback is you have to remember to take it off. If you run to go to the bathroom, you could yank out your computer and all this other kind of stuff. But whatever, I mean, to me, <laughs> that's not an issue. The labs are great, and you can put them under your shirt, keep them out of the way. This one comes with a built-in USB port. $18 for this this setup and um, uh, you know it's easy to travel with unlike the condenser mic it's a little bit big so this is the third thing the biggest uh, uh, misgiving I have about recommending a lavalier is that a good one is expensive um, condenser mics um, because they're larger it's easier to manufacture inexpensive ones um, obviously, the dynamics been, technology have been around forever, um, but a good lav mic is probably going to cost you. Well, I mean, it's all subjective, but just know that it, when you see people on TV or interviewed or in documentaries, generally um, they're speaking on a on a lav mic that's probably around five hundred dollars. Uh, so, but you know, if 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 you don't mind, it's it's a good investment. They'll hold their value for a long time. Uh, get a good get a good lav mic. Uh, and then to me, you have the, the best solution possible because it, you know, it goes with you. Um, 
it doesn't pick up much room noise, if any room noise. Uh, so anyway, again, just wanted to point out, there's a lab mic uh, that you want to consider. And I have a list where I have the three basic microphone types. So for $200, you can get a USB condenser microphone, this microphone, and a USB version of this microphone, which is $70. It's just more expensive because it has a USB connection to it. So I do recommend uh, getting all three type types of mics because, you know, in different situations, you may need different things. You may, let's say you go out to a restaurant with your laptop and now you want to talk to somebody. Um, obviously, you can use a headset, but let's say you want to use this stuff we're using here where you want to use your, you know, you want to put on your earbud um, and you don't want to see anything. Then, then you'd want a lavalier. So you pull the lavalier out of your drawer and you bring it. So you go to the restaurant, you put it on, you won't get all the restaurant noise and you'll look professional. So that's why you might want a lav mic. The condenser mic, obviously, you would want for the uh, for general stuff if you're uh, doing a, a Zoom call or a team call. But what if somebody calls and says, I want you to be on my podcast? You know, we're going to have the video of you, but we're also going to make a podcast. Well, on a podcast, audio is really important. So you take out your dynamic mic, it's only $20 or whatever, and you put it there and you make sure you're three inches and now your quality will match their quality perfectly if they have a high production value podcast. This is what you want for podcasts. This is what they all use for podcast For any truly professional podcast, they're using dynamic microphones. And again, the $20 version or the $70 version with USB is just as good as all the others. So to recap, lavalier when you're traveling or maybe you'll just like it, the condenser for general purposes, and the dynamic mic when you want to get the absolutely perfectly nuanced audio.